But it's said that yeah. your art is not for everyone, but those people that support you is for you, yeah. you know? What's that iconic line? I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my... Clap it up a little bit, man. Let's clap it up, let's clap it up. Today's episode is full of creativity, lack of inspiration. So if you all are creatives, we all are creatives in our own nature. Whether you are creative in a structural way, with, like you have a company, or you do art, or you're a poet, or you have a podcast, or you're creative in your career, um, we all are creatives in nature. Um, but a lot of times we're creative in nature, but sometimes we lack inspiration to pour those, create, those creative ideas out to the world, right? And so today's conversation is just about that. Uh, we're going to take it here on level one, and then later on in the conversation, uh, episode three, we're going to be on level 10, talking about dating red flags. Uh, we're going to be talking about men ghosting women. So we're going to get there. But, you know, we want to start off today in today's conversation. To my far left, I have Aaron Mullen. Tell him about yourself, Aaron. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for this platform, bro. Uh, as an event curator myself, like, I understand when things don't go as planned, but I see your composure. You got a strong team around you. You got everybody in here, you know, trying to support you. Absolutely. So you're just surrounded by love. But uh, my name is Aaron Mullen. I am originally from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. You know, it's 252. Two five. Know you. <laughs> oh, we got some two five in here. Bon, I see you. I've been in Raleigh since uh, since 2016. Um, you know, by trade, I'm a digital marketer. Um, I went to ECU, a grad program at NC State. Um, you know, working on those certifications. Uh, about four or five years ago, I started a business called um, Art by AM. It's pretty much a photography business. You know, I do a lot of events, you know, weddings. Concerts, you know, branding, you name it. Um, since then, uh, me and my friends started a young professional networking group out here called RDUPP. You know, I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, started that in like 2017. And since then, you know, we actually grown to like 2,400 people in our platform. So, you know, we're all about bringing people together, sharing resources, just pushing the culture forward. Um, you know, since then, you know, taking that background in like photography and event planning, I started a, a pop-up series called Studio Vibes. Studio Vibes, uh, for the most part, it just allows people to kind of showcase their talents. You know, we had uh, we had about four or five events. You know, we had our initial event in Atlanta. That that turned out really well, really inclusive. We brought it back to Raleigh. We was able to get you know, close to three hundred people together you know, last summer. Um, you know, we're providing like portrait photography there, you know, we're providing like live musical performances. We're giving uh, black owned brands and businesses an opportunity to kind of showcase their, their, their skills, their talents, you know, to, to, to a new market. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's lit. You know, I, I just love bringing people together. Um, lastly, I recently started my own uh, marketing agency. So, you know, I'm working in marketing full time on a corporate level. You know, the goal is to do that for myself. I'm saying, like, I, I mentioned this to schooling or at first, but uh, towards the end of, of the year, going into, you know, 2023, I look forward to kind of transitioning into my own lane. Being your own boss. Yeah, that's that's pretty much everything, though. Bro. Absolutely. Well, love to have you, man. Thank you for coming. Stuff it up. Next up, we got my boy Sam Archer. Introduce yourself. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Sam Archer here, CEO and founder of Master and the Man. That's on all platforms. It's a male enthusiast, content creator. Uh, for all the fellas, if you're looking for date ideas, fashion, fitness, finance, all that, I got you. I like to focus on freedom, freedom in the mind, freedom from society, and all types of things like that. Um, Co-host of Black Final Wall for a couple of years now. Love being here. Just love being able to get my opinion, my perspective on things. Aggie alumni for all my Aggies Chill. in here. Aggie you pride. Y'all already know what it is. Aggie feel. pride till I die. Y'all already know. What are Rams know. at, man? Nah, y'all ain't in here. Y'all ain't in here. Hey. Ain't nobody see y'all. Y'all ain't in here. Nah, but for real, I'm a uh, engineer by day. Uh, who, who in here? Y'all in that crazy in here? stuff. What? There's some Eagles in here? Ain't nobody even. Yeah, nah. 
Yo, no. No. It sounds good. It sounds good. But I'm um, an engineer by day, a serial entrepreneur by night, um, into a lot of brand enthusiasm and stuff like that. So I'm just happy to be here, man. Excited. Nice. Nice. And next up, we have the lovely Ali Capo. Ali, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Ali Capo. I'm a creative influencer. I'm also a singer songwriter. I also play guitar. And I am a fashion designer. I made my own outfit. Excited for that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, nice. Uh, thank you for uh, pulling up on us, Ali. So let's start off with the first question tonight, man. Mullen, how do you balance realism and imagination? when it comes to creativity? That's a really good question. Um, I feel like you know, if I just sit at the crib, you know, just, just thinking about things I want to kind of put in motion, you know, uh, I could do that all day long, but you have to be realistic with yourself. You have to realize that you're only one person. You have to realize that your, your resources are limited. Your time is valuable. So, you know, I try to be realistic with myself, but still being like, like, creative at the same time. It's a, it's a struggle, but you know, if you got the right team around you, you know, as I spoke to earlier, you can do a lot of amazing things out here. Right. You know, I, I feel also, too, man, it's like creativity has no bounds to it. I think some of the greatest music that we uh, tap into, whether it's trap, rap, rock and roll, country, R&B, whatever it may happen, I think that we got some of those beautiful sounds by not putting ourselves in a box when it comes to creativity. So a lot of times as a creative, um, you struggle between is this realistic for me to do or should I step out on, a, on faith or, you know, take a risk to complete something? Right. I think some of the most amazing things that we see in life, whether it's cars, planes, buildings, whatever it may be, it took somebody who thought something was unrealistic to go out and create that. You know, even with this podcast, like um, you have to you have to be able to take a risk in order to differentiate yourself from other people. You have to take a risk to whether somebody may vibe with it or not. I think risk is the inherent um, truth in creativity. So we ought to always be able to um, be able to take, you know, calculated risks um, to not be reckless with your decision making, but to be balanced in the way you do things. I think I think personally, I think we also complicate a lot of stuff. Right. Absolutely. Like I think most of the crowd in here, if I said creative, y'all would think art, y'all would think music. How many of us love Chick-fil-A? Right. Raise your hand if you love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so if you break down creativity like this, you're craving Chick-fil-A. You're not there. You don't have it. But then you find yourself in the drive through Then you find yourself with a sandwich in front of you. You just created your own reality on mm -hmm. such a smaller scale. But you can do that with money. You can do that with fashion. You can do that with your whole reality. I think sometimes we just complicate it in a way that it makes us scared of it. You know what I mean? So we just got to break it down a little bit and just make it a little bit feedable. You know what I mean? A little bit digestible. I like that. And a lot of things can happen for you. So. I like that. I like, I like how you threw that up. Now, Allie, like, how would you say in, in pertain, as it pertains to your brand as a uh, creator, does, uh, how much, how much what role does manifestation play into you manifesting the things that you see in your head and creating them um, in your clothing or in your music? Yeah, it plays a huge role. Um, for instance, I had an event and uh, I needed to wear like a certain dress and I uh, couldn't order in time. So I made a decision, like, I'm still going to make this dress. I didn't know how to do it, so I just went to the fabric store, and I was like, I'm going to figure it out. And I made it happen. So it starts with a goal, an end goal, and then you have to figure out what you're going to do to get to that point. But it's a determination, and it starts mm -hmm. in your mind. And then if you have the skill set, like, it's up to you to bring it into fruition. Yeah, I, I feel like determination is like uh, the lack of inspiration is up. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like, honestly, you know, determination is something that has to be uh, pulled from inside of you. Yes. Like, no matter what's in front of you, like all of us that went to college and that graduated, uh, when we came in freshman year, we might not have known what to expect, right? But we had the determination that, you know what, no matter if it take me four years, five years, six years, if I got to take a break and come back, if I had a baby and got to come back, or if I got caught up with some stuff with weed or whatever my freshman year, no matter what, I'm going to come back and finish my education. And I think since education provides us with structure and sometimes the creative ideas doesn't, is not structural, we struggle with that. So I like how you, uh, you mentioned that you were determined and the first thing you said was you set a goal. And whenever you set goals and you write things down, I'm a, 
I'm a firm believer, man, that when you write things down oh, yeah. on in pen and paper, like you will see those things manifest into your reality. You know, if I don't know anybody, if there's anybody in the crowd that has experienced that, you know, whether you're writing down what type of, my fiance always talk about write down what you want and a man, he'll come to you. <laughs> That's the thing, you know what I'm saying? So it's, so. Make sure y'all be specific on that one. Y'all might mess around and get the raw stuff, hey. I think, I, 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 I think it's strong, man. I think it's strong whenever you, whenever you write down the things that you want in life and you go out there and get them. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, but you have to like be aware of who you're sharing your ideas with. Uh, it's a lot of times where hold on, hold on. So say that again, man. I, see, I don't think they be, heard you. You have to be real particular about who you share your ideas with. You know, everybody isn't isn't meant to know your business like that. You know, you got some people who are looking at you. They want to be like you. You know, they they might take your idea and run with it. You know, so Absolutely. be intentional about what what it is you want to put your energy energy into, and then just like share it with the world when the time is right. Absolutely. You also got to understand though, like what's for you is for you, like. I could tell you what my outfit is going to be. You can go copy it, but you're not going to wear it like me. Like your, your creativity, <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all feel me? Your, your creativity is like your swag in a sense, right? We can have, we can do the same as that thing, but what I do with it and what you do with it is going to be completely different. So you got to remember that too. So, that's a bar, man. You need, you need some snaps for that, Sam. Oh, I get some snaps. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, uh, Sir Astrak, put me on the next show, my boy. You hear me? Out here? You hear me? And you know, too, I, I think I think we can't talk about creativity unless we talk about anxiety and fear. Uh, like the the one one of the one of the biggest uh, challenges, and I heard a story that uh, Denzel Washington shared, is that if you were if you knew that whenever you laid on your deathbed or, or that you died, and you looked up, and the ghosts of your uncreated ideas were surrounding you, how would you want your last day to be? And so we always have to live life on on empty, right? If you if you want to if you want to do a certain workout today, you do that. If you want to create a certain brand or a certain clothing brand, you do that. I feel like sometimes we take life for granted. You know, like we may not be able to we, not, we may not be here tomorrow or be here uh, next year or five years or 10 years from now. You know, I think the life of Virgil Abloh when it came to when it came to creativity is that he left us with so much. You know, he left us with not only just fashion, but I think um, he left us with a lot of perseverance. Um, and I think he also left us with the ability to be able to take the most simple things and convert them into something that's a, a global brand. And, and, and so let's 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 clap it up for Virgil, man. Just you, just doing it for the culture. And that's um, and that's only the stuff that we've seen. You know what I mean? Like we talk about like talk about Chadwick. Like we got posthumous art from him that he was doing while he was struggling with cancer. You know what I mean? Right. Like we don't even know what we haven't seen yet. So it's possible he got something that works for us for real. Absolutely. I feel like when it comes to like anxiety, like somebody has to be the first to do something. You know, like nothing's gonna be perfect. Like if you look at a duck uh, floating on the water, everything is calm on top, but underneath, like it's it's kicking, it's fluttering. Like you know, so like people know. don't know. People are gonna only know like what you're showing. Right. So regardless if it's like a sound thing, it's lighting, you know, you keep your composure. Everything's gonna work itself out. Absolutely. In the world, so. If you're scared, you're probably doing something right. Like, True. If it doesn't scare you, that means you're too comfortable most of the time. So True. If you're scared, go ahead and you know explore. If it get too crazy, invite somebody in, you know, somebody mm -hmm. you trust. But if it get too too crazy, go ahead and pull out. That might be a sign yeah. too. God might be like, nah, this ain't for you. And I, I believe um, every artist needs to get over the fear of rejection. And like, <laughs> you know, and accept that yeah. your art is not for everyone, but those people that support you is for you. You yeah. know. What's that iconic line? I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody facts. know that. Everybody know that. One. Facts, facts, and and I think another thing we have to tap on, to tap in too, man, is is the importance of rebranding, right? A lot of times, um, one of my favorite universal laws is the law of detachment, right? Being able to detach yourself from your, the thing that you love in order to achieve a specific goal, and a lot of times we get attached to the idea, like the idea of owning a lounge or the idea of starting a clothing brand or the idea of painting and we're attached to that but we're not we're not flexible and willing to do whatever it takes to achieve or to manifest that particular thing and so a lot of times we we have to be able to be comfortable with rebranding ourselves right it's all about the pivot yeah it's all about the pivot like and also being able to recognize when you need to pivot as a creative right like we have to be able to um be humble when it comes to creativity um and be humble to seek advice um, if you have an issue or something going on with your health, you go to a doctor. 
You got something going on with your tooth, you go to a dentist. So it's important for us to surround ourselves with creative mentors and most importantly, a team. Um, everything that you see here is a, not a manifestation of just me. It's a manifestation that I, 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 I attach myself to uh, like-minded individuals with my team. And we all have a collective consciousness when it comes down to seeing this thing right here come into fruition. So I think team, I want you to speak on team and the importance of that. Uh, I mean, I know Vaughn, your road dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, uh, Vaughn, he's, like, I've been knowing Vaughn, you know, since college, right? I kind of keep like a tight knit circle around me, but everybody has kind of like, like earned their stripes in my, my corner. Um, everybody's like, like-minded, you know, ambitious, you know, young men and women. And you know, we've just been able to do a lot of great things in the community. But I also just like I'm I'm really big on networking, you know. So like I'm, you know, you would think I'm shy, or whatever. If you see me, but you know, like I I love like just hearing people's stories because if I can't do something for somebody, I might know somebody who could, you know, be that connected for you. So you know, when you are able to kind of like meet with like-minded people, you know, just just keep them uh, close to you. I feel like we really undervalue like like loyalty. You know, Twenty twenty two. You know, if you got everybody on the same mission, you know, it, you're only going to be successful going forward. Absolutely. And Ali, what, what do you think about that teamwork? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you are who you hang around, right? So it's important that you surround yourself with people who are like-minded, who are going where you want to go. And sometimes you have to be comfortable with leaving people in the past that are not at the same goal of where you want to be. So, um, like, it's important that you're constantly doing an inventory of those who are around you and having a similar goal. Absolutely. And Sam, what's important when, when it comes to teamwork, man? How, what, what does that mean to you with uh, mastering mean, the man? Honestly, man, I look at like where I've been in my career um, in life. I think I owe a lot of stuff to my team, right? That, like, when you had the right team, it's more like your family. Like, you can have the best t-shirt in the world, but if you ain't making no sales, you're really not going to go anywhere. A lot of times, your first supporters are coming from your team. Mm -hmm. those are the people who are going to push you. Those are the people who are going to keep you on track. Those are the people who are going to actually not always say yes, you know what I mean, because and, and, they're not afraid to hurt your feelings. Right. So you kind of need those people around to be like, hey, no, nah, this ain't it, or just kind of check you and keep you on the right path, especially if you really want to go somewhere. So if you, if you kind of build your network up, there's a book I always talk about. It's called Successes in Our Race, and it talks about the importance of networking. And if you've got 100,000 people on the same mission, you take, you take the option of crabs in a barrel. If all the crabs are trying to help each other out the barrel, eventually they'll get out. But everybody wants to be the first one out the barrel. So that's why you had that crabs in a barrel mentality. But if you got a network of everybody doing the same thing, trying to get on the same mission, you'd be surprised if you go look at that barrel to be empty. Absolutely. So and like, like, and like Hove said, man, the, uh, crabs don't believe don't belong in the barrel. They ain't never tell us that. Facts, facts. So you, it's like it's like all of these little things that we that we've learned throughout our lives that don't may really make sense, but we attach them to as as childhood stories. Yep. Um, I think to, to, to sum up everything, um, what are some tools? Let's leave the people with some tools, some things, some tangible things that they can do to uh, structurally um, manifest their creativity. Who wants to start with that? <laughs> right. uh, somebody mentioned, like, just goal setting, right? Like, I'm all about affirmations. You know, I, I'll write something on a board, look at it every day for, like, my five months so that happened you know and setting a new goal so real big on goal setting you know, real big on kind of speaking things into existence doing the research you know, you might not know how to make a hundred thousand dollars right then and there but if, you, if you're well versed in your craft and you know, you're surrounding yourself with uh, mentors who've been there you know kind of did the work already you know, you're going to be successful um, also so just kind of like Going back to the, the previous question about teamwork, just realizing like what skills the people in your corner already had, right? Like one of my guys, he's an accountant. You know, my boy Vaughn, he's a, a risk manager, okay. a marketer. And we also had like a, a event planner on our squad too. So, so it's like everybody kind of had you know, their own skills, and we brought that into like the collective. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you know, teamwork, goal setting, and then just executing. You know, you're gonna have bumps in the road. Absolutely. You're going to have days where you don't really feel like doing it. You just got to stick with it. Absolutely. And Ali, let's, let's go with you. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, goal setting. Um, keep going. Anytime, like, you, you know, 
like you said, hit bumps in the road, just keep going. And also, um, another tool is your environment. So, like, when I'm creating, I make sure that it's a it's in an environment, in a place that inspires me to create and be. That's key. You know what I mean? That's key. So. Also, pray on it, too. Yeah, Faith prayer. Faith is everything. Yeah. You know, prayer, like, prayer, prayer. Absolutely. It gets you through it. That's definitely my two, my two keys to success, prayer and meditation. Uh, you honestly introduced me to meditation, and I would pray, you know what I mean? I, I got a saying that God leaves clues, and I think when you pray about certain things, you can kind of open your eyes to them, but when you meditate and kind of really know yourself and really know what you want to do in life and where you want to go, you're more apt to see these clues around you and the guidance that come from it. So Absolutely. prayer and meditation for sure. You know, I, I, I was going to say manifest. I was going to say uh, meditation because um, a lot of people know that that's, I'm, I'm big on that, but you know, I think uh, one thing that helped me start channeling my creativity was whenever I went to therapy. Whenever I went to therapy and, and really uh, peel back some layers, um, because creativity also is, is you have to be very vulnerable when it comes to that. You got to be vulnerable to learning new things about yourself. You got to be uh, you got to be vulnerable to exploring masculine and feminine energies. You got to be vulnerable to a lot of different things. And so therapy really helped set the foundation for me to be able to do that. Um, and, and also to be able to channel that energy in the right direction, right? So I think, so I think those are all key takeaways, man. Therapy, goal setting, medita- manifestation, uh, prayer, meditation, all of those things that will help anybody significantly be able to achieve any goal that they want to be able to achieve. So uh, thank you all for listening in. That's the, that's the first one. Uh, full of creativity, lack of inspiration. Thank yeah. you. Spread love. Put me in the times, I'm in prime mode. Head of my time, anytime, every time zone. The God flow, I'm in God mode. Blessings hitting me with combos. I ball, cello, mellow, Lonzo. Time is money, no money, no combo. Manifesting my dream pronto. They couldn't detonate me, they let a bomb blow.